we live in, in time, you know, of post-truth. This is the first thing. And you know that um, Oxford Dictionary included that word into, uh, into dictionary recently this year. And uh, because of an enormous circulation of that word, uh, before it meant something else. It meant the truth after the actual event. Today, it, it penetrated everywhere, and it means that truth could be distorted, that it doesn't matter. Facts do not matter, but our feelings, uh, our hurt feelings, or whatever. <laughs> so, um, and of course, technology helps a lot to that. So today you can find on internet, I mean, people talking about Hegel and not being philosophers, but cooks, or, um, you know, um, the, the people teaching you how to m do a makeup and not being uh, cosmeticians. So what happened, and I noticed that uh, at the beginning of uh, this new Croatia, that the key word is, in fact, which nobody ever mentioned, is deprofessionalization. That is what happened when Tujman uh, came into power uh, in Croatia, and that's what happened when Milosevic came into power in Serbia. So now, after so many years, that what, mean, what does it mean, deprofessionalization? That means that, let's say, all the judges who were Serbs in Croatia, they were fired. Uh, all journalists who were Serbs or who were Yugoslavs or concerned to be anti-Croatian, this and that, they were um, fired or the, all the professors at the university who didn't support Croatian nationalistic uh, politics, they were fired. So journalists, radio people, um, uh, uh, writers, intellectuals, professors, even doctors who were Serbs in hospitals, they were fired. <coughs> And, uh, and now, after 25 years, uh, we are in fact um, uh, uh, confront we are confronted with the results that <coughs> that um, I, not being a politician, <laughs> not being a political scientist, not being anthropologist, not being a, a sociologist. Um, I uh, became a sort of an expert um, on nationalism. I must say that uh, why I so heavily uh, took all that case of fall of Yugoslavia and everything is because it is fair to say that I'm post-war child. I was born in 1949. And uh, that means that somehow all my generation, it grew in the shadow of uh, Second World War. Uh, um, that also means that somehow uh, we were induced the coordinates of good and evil. In that respect, evil were fascists and good were anti-fascists. <laughs> uh, good was my father because he was 17 when he joined Tito's partisans. And bad were enemies, and they were Germans. So that's how it was very simple to sort of live in, in that uh, polarized world, uh, where we sort of knew what is good and what is bad. Today, children, they do not, I aware you, they, today children, they don't know the difference in between uh, image of Mickey Mouse and image of Hitler anymore. They, they don't know uh, what is what. I picked 
somehow the ideological package of socialist Yugoslavia. And that ideological package was sort of pretty um, simple. The main formula was um, that we should cherish brotherhood and unity like an apple of our eye. That's how I learned when I was very young, what does it mean, apple of, of an eye? <laughs> and that was apparently the sentence slogan belongs to, to Tito, they say. Also, it was education was something which was a crucial part of that package ideological package, and um, it was even uh, sort of, I mean, um, knowledge and knowledge and knowledge, that, that was the, the crucial thing. And I remember how my mother would always say for somebody that he studied in Sorbonne, and that was something which was the, the highest thing one could imagine. And uh, when I was a little girl, I I promised my, myself that I would study in Sobron because I like to, I, I could not, I misspell it, so to Sobron, and then that I would, of course, be famous like Minou Drouet. You don't know who Minou Drouet was. That was a little girl. She was 10 when she published her first book. <clears throat> and. Um, and she was globally well known, but then she disappeared. <laughs> and um, and of course, later on came some other idols. Like um, they were apparently all connected with France, uh, and I didn't have anything to do with France. That I will one day live on Mansart, so that I will study at Sobron, and that I will have a boyfriend as ugly and as um, as um, smart as Jean-Paul Sartre. <laughs> I also studied comparative literature and Russian language and literature, Russian language and literature not because um, not because Yugoslavs were forced to learn Russian language the opposite because we were enemies. So um, so I studied it because I was very much interested in Russian avant-garde, and uh, I studied I studied that. And um, I also I must um, I must admit that I was that my critics in Croatia would call pretty clumsily like nationally colorblind. I really. Um, as my parents never ever uh, mentioned such things, I I would always in all my documents I would uh, declare myself as Yugoslav because my father was a Yugoslav and my mother, although she never denied her Bulgarian um, <coughs> her Bulgarian um, uh, family, uh, I mean she was Yugoslav too, so. So somehow I didn't have that 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 problem of uh, of self positioning, and um, yes, it was uh, for the first time I've heard such stories when somebody else would define me as Croatian, or in 1971 um, uh, during the Croatian Spring, uh, which was the rehearsal political rehearsal, what will come 20 years later in 1991. So then people would ask me, who am I? And I would be surprised um, hearing when I said that I'm a Yugoslav, then my friends would say, yeah, but all the Serbs in Croatia would declare themselves Yugoslavs. I, Nevertheless, I didn't pay attention. I didn't know what does it mean. I also, I must admit that um, um, many people would tell you uh, from being from former Yugoslavia that they knew things would happen. Oh, I always knew that we are going to have a new war or something like that. I didn't. I admit honestly, I didn't, simply because uh, I was rational, and as we know, I mean, 
fascism, one of characteristics, according to Umberto Eco, of fascism is irrationality. So um, my rational view was that people are not so crazy that they are going to kill each other or go into the war or anything just because of uh, politics, that things could be solved in a, in a civilized manner. But nevertheless, I was wrong. And in 1991, when all of that started, I was simply appalled. Uh, I was also invited in September of 1991 to come to Amsterdam because my, my books were published here. And um, I used the little moment when uh, there was a ceasefire and although banks were closed and um, I mean uh, also embassies were closed for visa, airports were closed, I took a train and I came to Amsterdam. Uh, <coughs> instead of one week, I spent in, in Amsterdam th three weeks and I managed to get my American visa because the next year, starting from January 1982, I was supposed to teach one semester at Wesleyan University, uh, Connecticut in the States. So uh, when I came back to Zagreb, things were changed. Uh, all my friends, uh, I remember clearly, we laughed to such figures like Milosevic and Tujman. Uh, suddenly nobody laughed and uh, things became uh, quite serious and I could see this, not even polarization, but homogenization and how people became uh, one collective body. And that was this language today mentioned, we. Suddenly, I mean, it was not my friend Nenad or my friend Maya, but they would declare themselves as we, we Croats. Okay? And, um, and then I wrote, uh, because at that time, it was a um, um, uh, souvenir, I mean, a uh, new Croatian state uh, was producing all sorts of things, ideology uh, uh, most of all, but also with the ideology souvenirs, that the ideology should be somehow swallowed in a, a sweeter manner. So at that time, in Croatia, you could find the souvenirs, uh, tins, cans, um, very much uh, resembling Coca-Cola cans. And, uh, <coughs> and they had a Croatian court of arms there. And, uh, and then it said, it was a slogan on, on those, they were empty cans, a souvenir can, cans. And it said, clean Croatian air. And, <coughs> and I wrote a little essay about that, about Mr. Clean. Uh, and I just counted what Mr. Clean is cleaning in Croatia, was cleaning at the very beginning in the year of 1982. So these things were obvious, I mean, to everybody, but nobody uh, really found them appalling or shocking. So libraries were cleaned of books, uh, books who were found in the garbage or even books who were burned because we had that too in the year of 1992, 93 and so. Um, <clears throat> Bukocid, Bukocide, <laughs> um, uh, that um, according to the instructions of then Minister of Culture, all the libraries in Croatia should be reorganized, okay? Meaning that books in Cyrillic letters 
uh, that books written by Serbs, books written by communists, books written by sympathizers of Yugoslavia, books written by William Shakespeare in Cyrillic letters or translated by Serbian translator, out, out, out. Teachers would participate in that too. Um, uh, the librarians would participate in that too. Uh, my books were found on the garbage too. Uh, according to the reports of some journalists. And uh, somebody even suggested that every book uh, written by a Croatian, pure Croatian author, should have a little sign, a traditional uh, Croatian platter. So that, uh, in, of course, in colors of Croatian flag, that every book should be marked by that, so that from the first sight you should know who are Croats and who are the rest, Shakespeare's and so, okay? So what else was cleaned apart from the books? Everything, school books, um, uh, books for the universities, um, um, uh, organizations, institutions, People got fired, as I told you at the beginning. So that, that was cleaned. And even at that time, there was, a, there was a, uh, something called spiritual renewal, uh, which simply meant that uh, <coughs> Croatia as one body, as we, as one collective, should become what purified. What does it mean purified? It meant to get rid of all uh, communist, socialist, uh, Yugoslav, uh, multicultural, whatever ideas. Okay? Uh, the great architect of Croatian state, Franjo Tuđman, together with Milosevic, I mean, uh, I'm taking as an example Croatia just because it is Portable, it's small and transparent, and I know it. Uh, so for me, it's not a state, uh, or these are not the people, but this is example. Um, I could I could take any other, but this is the one I know the best. Okay, so um, so that means that architect of Croatian state, Franjo Tuđman, he totally relied on independent state of Croatia during the Second World War when Croatia was a Nazi puppet state, okay? With everything uh, one Nazi state should have, with its policy, culture, ideology, and concentration camps for Jews, Serbs, Romas, and so forth. Um, including language, institutions, uh, ideology, even what was returned, even a symbols, like the same court of arms, the same flags, the same money, and the same name for the money. Uh, many words from this uh, newly invented for the uh, purposes of Nazi state of Croatia were returned in new Croatia in 1991. They penetrated into the language. And of course, the major thing is the restoration of history. history. So good guys, partisans, they should be burned and deleted. Yugoslavia deleted totally and prohibited and um, what should be resurrected as a value and as a tradition is a Croatian Nazi puppet state. Uh, so the story about restoration, uh, um, it 
lasts already a quarter of century. It lasts 25 years. Because Croatia became independent in 1981, uh, we are today 2016. So it is exactly quarter of century.